What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another upload on the newly announced Marvel's Wolverine game. Besides the info regarding the game's length and potential tone, we have yet to receive an official release date, which is a clear indication that Sony is giving Insomniac all the time they need to develop this game until they're positively sure they know when they want to launch it. So in the meantime, while we wait to get our hands on this highly anticipated game, we're going to keep it pushing with theories and discussions. But before we dive into the video, I asked you guys to give this video a thumbs up. I know it's a little out of the norm for me to ask you to do that, but YouTube's algorithm sort of encourages it. So if you rock with your boy and you know I'm going to bring you that awesome content, then smash that like button. And if by any chance you make it to the end of the video and it didn't meet your satisfactory, you're more than welcome to take that like back and give it a dislike. But yeah guys, other than the trailer and brief description regarding Marvel's Wolverine's tone, we don't have much to go off of. Hell, we don't even know who will be voicing Logan for this upcoming game. So rightfully so, we're desperately waiting to get more information while we play the waiting game. We're also eager to know what kind of gameplay we'll be getting with this version of Wolverine, because there have been a lot of variations of the character in video games over the years. And since Insomniac did an excellent job incorporating things from the older Spidey games into their Marvel Spider-Man game, we're wondering what old mechanics from previous X-Men games they'll inject into Marvel's Wolverine. Like this character has been featured in a slew of video games dating back all the way to the 8-bit era. We're talking side-scroller beat-em-ups, fighting games, and even RPGs. Besides being featured in X-Men and Avengers games, Wolverine has had his own fair share of solo ventures, two of which I'm going to talk about in this video. But before we do that, I want to briefly talk about some of Logan's moves that I like to see from the movies. Because if you haven't noticed, the latest Spider-Man games also have a lot of elements and references from their cinematic counterparts. The web swinging animations from Marvel Spider-Man scream the Amazing Spider-Man films, which arguably have some of the best swinging sequences to date. Like there's still things in some that can incorporate from those films in terms of web swinging. Something else that I appreciate them for is referencing certain scenes from the movies, like the train sequence from Spider-Man 2. After thinking about this, I instantly thought back to all the scenarios they could harken back to from the X-Men films for Wolverine's game. If they could reference the Spider-Man 2 train sequence, then they could do the same in this Wolverine game by harkening back to the bullet train sequence from his second solo film, The Wolverine. This scene, in my opinion, is one of the most creative sequences I've seen in terms of action. For one, Wolverine can't do the usual run and slash tactic. Instead, he has to use his claws to cling on for dear life and pick the right time to attack. Or he'll risk being flung off at high speeds. I think this would work well in the form of a mission, because Wolverine is just one of those characters who's fun to watch in these type of scenarios. No matter if he's free falling or jumping off of a moving vehicle, he's going to do it in the sickest way possible. And it's largely in part to his advanced durability and enhanced reflexes. Like this dude can pretty much adjust to any speed and occasionally he can turn his entire body into a fastball. So I definitely think we should get something in the same vein as the bullet train scene from the Wolverine movie. Another movie I think they can take a page or two from is X-Men Origins. Now when it comes to this movie, it doesn't really have much going for it. I mean before X-Men Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix reared their ugly heads, this was considered the worst movie in the franchise, which is so rightfully deserves. But despite all of that, I do believe there were some cool things that somebody I could utilize from this film. If you remember in my last video, I mentioned the possibility of this title being Open World. Obviously Wolverine is limited in terms of traversal compared to the likes of Spider-Man who can swing anywhere within a matter of minutes. So Wolverine would have to use his signature motorcycle to get where he needs to go. And while I was thinking about this, that chase scene from X-Men Origins popped into my mind. During this sequence, Wolverine has to avoid being shot down by Agent Zero who's riding a helicopter. And when it looks like he's been backed into a dead end, he drags his claws into the ground to allow his bike to make a sharp U-turn. Turn. If Insomniac decides to feature high speed vehicle chases in their Wolverine game, this would make an awesome mechanic to utilize. I can see Logan using it to lose some of his enemies, or he could just slash the side of their tires. Anyways, another thing I can see the devs lifting from this movie is the ability to launch from a vehicle. This was kind of implemented in the movie tie-in game, but it wasn't fully utilized, so I think it would be an awesome mainstay in Marvel's Wolverine. But with all those dream ideas out of the way, I think it's time that we talk about some of the games Insomniac could take notes from. As mentioned, there are two Wolverine games that are revered highly by X-Men fans, one of which includes X2 Wolverine's Revenge. This is a title that a lot of fans were disappointed in me not mentioning in my previous video. I mean, it's obvious that I'm going to talk about mechanics from X-Men Origins the game, but it's easy to forget that the most ambitious Wolverine game we had gotten before that was Wolverine's Revenge. And I just gotta be honest with you guys, I've never been crazy about this game, because for one, it was a movie tie-in game. 
which usually means that it's a half-finished game that's been rushed to coincide with the cinematic counterpart's release. What's even funnier about this game is the fact that it may have originally been its own thing and not tied to X-Men 2 because the story doesn't have remotely anything to do with the movie. With the exception of Patrick Stewart returning to voice Professor Xavier, no one else from the movies reprised their roles. Not to mention that from an aesthetic standpoint, the characters were obviously based on Grant Morrison's run of the X-Men comics because you see Wolverine and the other X-Men members wearing their suits from the 2001 New X-Men comic series. So this game was most likely intended to be similar to what Ultimate Spider-Man was, where it's tied to the comics it's named after. But since there was a new X-Men movie over the horizon, Activision made the Dells release the game earlier than it was intended to be and stamped Hugh Jackman's face on it. So unfortunately, Wolverine has fallen victim to this a lot in the early years when the X-Men movie rights were held by Fox and the gaming license was held by Activision. That's why a lot of people, including myself, don't acknowledge X2 Wolverine's Revenge and mainly speak about X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition. It's the only movie tie-in game that still managed to implement a lot with an extremely short deadline it had. Not to mention it completely blows the movie it's based off out of the water. But despite all of that, I do believe there are some mechanics from X2 Wolverine's Revenge that were underrated and can be improved upon. The first thing I'd implement is the ability to retract and release Wolverine's claws. It's something that's highly slept on in most games since the character is mainly seen with his adamantium claws drawn out. But he can more than handle his own without having to resort to them at all, especially if he's dealing with the usual human jobbers. If Insomniac decides to incorporate this mechanic, it could allow the gameplay to be very flexible in terms of combat. In the comics, Wolverine has mastered virtually every form of martial arts, so he can pretty much do any move he wants. So I can see him having a different set of moves for his retracted claw mode. And I could also see players mixing those moves with the release claw move set. Another thing that I think they could add to the retracted claw mode is a vital blow system. Obviously, Wolverine's entire skeletal system is covered in adamantium, so if he were to punch or kick you in a specific area, it could lead to critical injuries. And I would love to see heavy emphasis on this. Like, I wouldn't even mind if Insomniac straight up lifts the X-Ray system from the Mortal Kombat games, where you can actually see your victim's skull get caved in or see their jaw dislocated. But moving on, the second mechanic I'd like to see make a return from X2 Wolverine's Revenge would have to be the tracking system, which allows Wolverine to utilize his superhuman sense of smell. If you play the game, then you know this mechanic wasn't really polished as much as it could have been. Since you were thrusted into these compounds that were filled with armed soldiers, you had to use Wolverine's heightened sense of smell and ability to detect body heat. You could take cover and perform stealth kills, but it was implemented so sloppily. Like watching Wolverine prance around on all fours like a poodle at a dog show still looks ridiculous to this day. So hopefully the devs can take what was unfinished about this mechanic and fully realize it in Marvel's Wolverine. But moving on, we gotta talk about some of the gameplay features from X-Men Origins Wolverine, which is going to be a tall order for Insomniac. Despite it being a movie tie-in game, it's damn near perfect. Like if you ask me, the developers Ravensoft don't get enough credit for their contribution to the X-Men games. This is literally the team responsible for creating X-Men Legends, which will become the precursor to the Ultimate Alliance series. They just understood these characters and how they should function in video games. And just like Treyarch served as the blueprint for Marvel Spider-Man, Ravensoft would do the same for Marvel's Wolverine. So yeah, there's a lot of things that are going to most likely be lifted from X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition. And if I'm going to be honest, I don't really know how Insomniac can improve upon them since the mechanics were pretty much perfect. The lunge attack was fully functional as it was satisfying. Wolverine could use the environment by knocking enemies into spikes. And don't get me started on the brutal finishers you can pull off. I think all of these things should be transferred over to the new game, but they need to be highlighted more. Such as the Hot Claws, which is a trait that's tied to Wolverine's Berserker Rage. Like during combat, Wolverine's Rage Meter would fill up and when full allowed him to use more devastating attacks like the Claw Spin and a Berserker Mode which increased Wolverine's Claw Strength until his Rage Meter empties. But that's as far as it went. In the comics, this ability was on another level. The Adamantium Claws could heat up several thousand degrees in a matter of seconds and they could reach high enough temperatures to cause gasoline to ignite in the flames on contact. Which means they have the potential to cut through other adamantium based objects. Speaking of objects, something we don't see in any Wolverine or X-Men game is how he could easily cut through anything as opposed to people. So there has to be a high level of detail in that area. That's the thing Insomniac is going to have to take into account. Claw marks need to remain permanent 
permanent on surfaces after Wolverine has gone on his slashing sprees. We need to see objects such as weapons, chairs, ladders, etc. be fully destructible or in Wolverine's case fully sliceable. Like everything from X-Men Origins Uncaged Edition just needs to be leveled up if possible. But with that said, I think I'm gonna end the video. I feel like I can't really say all the things I do with these two games since as I mentioned one of them is pretty much the perfect Wolverine game. So we'll just have to wait and see what new things Insomniac brings to the table. In the meantime while we wait I want you guys to let me know some of the things you'd implement from previous X-Men games in the comment section below. As always I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed this video it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.